The title of this talk is Does Male Mate Choice Occur in a Lecking Species When Multiple Females Are Present? In a lek mating system, males congregate in groups called leks to display for visiting females, and only a few of the males receive the majority of the matings. Now, in this mating system, males do not provide any offspring care. Mate choice on leks is usually assumed to be driven by choosy females that search among and compare displaying males. And while this is certainly a well-supported explanation, it's perhaps not the complete picture. So when multiple females attend a male's display at the same time, Male mate choice may also play a role. However, male mate choice in lecking species has not been studied as in-depth as female mate choice. Males are typically assumed to simply uh, display indiscriminately towards all females. Now, there have been a number of studies that have demonstrated evidence of male mate choice in lecking species, such as that in the haplochromine cichlid and the lesser wax moth. But despite the current evidence, male mate choice is still an understudied topic that may be an underestimated force in sexual selection. So in this study, we were interested in determining if male mate choice occurs in the lance-tailed mannequin. To do this, we used a long-term study population where the majority of individuals are color banded for individual identification. These birds have an exploded lek mating system where females shop among visually separated display sites for a mate. And males form relatively long-term alpha and beta partnerships, and they perform cooperative displays for females. But with rare exception, only the alpha ultimately gets to mate with the female. Males display on individual display perches, which consist of a horizontal sapling relatively close to the ground, which you can see an example of in the photo here. They typically use the same display perch throughout the breeding season, which allows us to set up video cameras in front of the display perches to capture all of their courtship activity. And something that's particularly important for this study is that we have found that 9 to 12% of displays each year actually involve more than just one female observing the display at the same time. So this is a video clip from the end of the display with two females present. So here you can see one female and then another female joins here and you can see the male finishing up his display and soon he's going to make a very clear choice. So the male is having to make a choice between the two females present. And whether or not this choice is entirely random or is based on a particular aspect of the female is the central question of this study. So when male mate choice occurs, males likely choose to mate with females based on traits that correlate with either indirect benefits to the male or direct benefits to the male. So indirect benefits would be, th would be things like high fertility or genetic compatibility for producing viable offspring. Or for direct benefits to the male, these would be things like virginity, lack of infection, and readiness to mate, as that means that the male doesn't have to expend quite as much energy on a not ready female. So we sought to test the hypothesis that male mate choice occurs in the lance-tailed mannequin when more than one female attends a male's display. So for this to hold true, we made two predictions. Our first was that when given a choice, males will prefer to mate with females that are the most likely to produce viable offspring. So in our species, we measured this by female age, as younger females are more likely to fledge offspring from the nest. We also made the prediction that males would prefer to mate with females that are the most ready to mate, which we measured as the first female to arrive at the display perch. Now this project stems from the same data that I collected during my dissertation research, where we set up continuously recording video cameras between the February and April of 2013 and 2014, at each of 12 display sites every day. Now these dates were chosen to include the beginning and the peak of the breeding season. For this project, we ended up with a total of 152 video recorded displays involving at least two females on the display perch. And actually, 13 of these involved three females and one absolutely amazing display involved four females simultaneously. So we did have some set requirements for displays to be included in this analysis. There had to be exactly two females present. We restricted it to banded and fully identified females so that we would know the ages of the females visiting. Both females had to land on the display perch at some point, and a copulation with at least one female had to occur because we needed the male to make a very clear choice between the two females. So as a result, this dramatically reduced our sample size down to 22 displays that met these criteria. But for meeting this stringent of criteria and for how uncommon multi-female displays are, this is actually a pretty good number. All right, so delving into our results, we first sought to see if males preferred to mate with the youngest female present of the two females 
at the display. So this is just a histogram to visualize the data. And on the x-axis, we have the age difference between the female that mated and the age of the female that did not mate in years. So a number on the right of this graph represents situations where the male chose to mate with the older female of the two. And those on the left of the graph represent those situations where the male chose to mate with the younger female of the two. And then right in the middle at zero, that's where there's no difference. These are situations where the two females visiting were the same age. But to show you an actual analysis of this data, uh, here's a graph of the results from a paired t-test where we found that males are not choosing to mate with females that are younger or older. So on the left, we have the female that mated, and on the right, we have the female that did not mate, and then age is on the y-axis. So there are actually two different types of graphs depicted here. The blue boxes are box and whisker plots, and then the thicker black lines that are going across the graph represent single displays. So for example, this one here at the bottom, this would be a situation where a three-year-old female and a two-year-old female were present on the display perch and the male mated with the three-year-old female. And so our results did not match our original prediction and it appears that males are not using age for making a choice between females. So now moving on to our second prediction, we found that males actually did choose to mate with the female that was the first to arrive on the display perch. So here we have whether the female that copulated was the first to arrive on the x-axis, and then just a count of how many displays fit each criteria on the y. So from our exact binomial test, we found that there was a 77% likelihood that males chose to mate with the first female to arrive at the display perch, which may be the female that is the most ready to mate. So our results did, they actually did match our original prediction in terms of direct benefits. And so our next step in this project will be to confirm with nest data whether the female first on the display perch is actually the closest to laying eggs in her nest. Now there are a number of other factors that can be considered on Lex when multiple females are present for a male's display. There is the potential for female mate choice copying and subsequent visits to the male. These multi-female displays may actually provide mating opportunities for subordinate males, which if that sounds like an interesting topic to you, you should definitely check out Emily Duvall's talk from yesterday. There's also the possibility of female-female competition for potentially limited sperm. So thanks for watching my talk and I'd be happy to answer any questions.